The year is 1997. The idea that a computer could beat a human at chess was outlandish. Then, in 1997, IBM's Deep Blue, a computer program, defeated world chess champion Garry Kasparov. And soon Kasparov's fans had to admit that the once unthinkable might actually be happening. How had it come to this? Deep Blue used machine learning to analyze millions of past games and improve its strategy. Around the same time, computer scientists were also attempting to create a computer program that could defeat humans at the game of Go. Yet the best computer Go system in the world was defeated by a nine-year-old child. Go is different to other games like chess. There are so many possible variations that it's virtually impossible to predict how or where a game is going or who is winning in the same way a game of chess can be calculated. More importantly, it involves a high degree of what we call human intuition. The rules are simple, but the game itself is incredibly complex. A computer system defeating a human at Go? Impossible. In 2014, DeepMind, a subsidiary company of Google, commenced the seemingly impossible. Conquering the game of Go would require something very different. It would require a system with an almost human-like intuition, rather than a traditional approach where a computer system would analyze millions of past games. AlphaGo was trained using deep reinforcement learning, allowing the system to learn for itself in a more intuitive way. By 2016, AlphaGo defeated world champion Go player Lee Seedong. Artificial intelligence researchers have solved the game of Go a decade earlier than expected. The computer named AlphaGo was able to beat the European human champion. Artificial intelligence researchers have made a significant breakthrough. It really is a big leap forward. There's a big difference between the way the uh, IBM computer beat Kasparov, which was programmed by expert chess players, and the way the Go playing computer more or less learned itself. And the way we start off training AlphaGo. In hindsight, deep reinforcement learning principles seem simple, but they're deeply profound. Imagine teaching a child to avoid getting wet when it rained. You could sit them down for months and teach them about the velocity of rain and weather patterns, or you could hand them an umbrella and nudge them out into the rain. Extra points if you incorporate a reward if they manage to come back dry. Each time we take away a bit of information, we offer an opportunity for the system to learn by itself. By this process, you're encouraging the system to learn by itself and form its own models of the world through experience. Since dominating the world of Go, AlphaGo has expanded into different realms and evolved its learning process. DeepMind's newest model, Muzero, has the ability to learn a game by itself without ever seeing the rulebook. It's becoming increasingly multi-purpose, able to achieve superhuman results in a scary short amount of time. While it's still a matter of debate as to whether deep reinforcement learning will be enough to create a general artificial intelligence, it's pretty clear that we're well on the path. And at this point, I wouldn't be betting against DeepMind or any of the competing companies cracking the artificial general intelligence code through deep reinforcement learning in the very near future. What is the simulation argument and simulation hypothesis? Consider the idea that an advanced civilization could create a simulated reality. We're not talking about SimCity, virtual reality, Resident Evil, or a Pokemon Go augmented experience. We're talking about a very detailed simulation where conscious, self-aware entities like us have experiences, completely unaware they're in the simulation. Creepy. The simulation argument proposes that one of the following statements must be true. A. Civilizations, like the human species, go extinct before they reach the level of technical maturity where they are able to create simulated realities. B. Civilizations do reach the technical maturity required to create this level of simulation, but they decide, for whatever reason, not to do so. C. Civilizations do reach the required level of technological capacity to create advanced simulations, and they do it. If A is true, it means we're fucked and probably alone in this universe. If B is true, it means there is a catalyst somehow prompting entire civilizations to coordinate and not press the simulation button. And then this brings us to C, the simulation hypothesis. As we get closer and closer to the creation of superintelligent AI, the simulation hypothesis becomes more and more substantive.
if human civilization does reach the increasingly likely situation where we create AGI and subsequently simulated realities indistinguishable from our own, it means we are almost certainly living in a simulation ourselves. To clarify that last bit, if we reach the increasingly likely point where we can create a high-quality simulation, then it validates it's possible. In which case, a countless number of civilizations have done the same thing, ancestor simulations. Given the incalculable number of simulated realities that are likely to exist, we are almost certainly in one of those simulated realities right now. Look at the simulation argument, which for me, it seems like case one and two feel unlikely. I, I want to say feel unlikely mm -hmm. as opposed to sort of in, like, it's not, it's not like I have too much scientific evidence to say uh, that either one or two are not true. It just seems unlikely that every single civilization destroys itself. Mm -hmm. And it seems like feels unlikely that the civilizations lose interest. So naturally, the without necessarily explicitly doing it, but the simulation, the simulation argument basically says it's very likely we're living in a simulation. Like to me... The specifics of how or where a simulated reality would and could exist are purely hypothetical because the technological capabilities are beyond our grasp. It also raises deep questions of what consciousness actually is and what lies beyond the simulation. The immediate counter-argument is simply to refute the idea that intelligence, consciousness and cognition can be fully recreated computationally. So what I'm trying to say, I mean, I try to put it in a nutshell, but it's not so easy. I'm trying to say that whatever consciousness is, it's not a computation. Yes. Or it's not a physical process. For many, the human bias wants this to be true. But as computer systems become increasingly, generally intelligent, the argument that intelligence and consciousness are unique to human biology loses more and more ground. God's Big Bang Simulation Button in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The universe was hatched from a single cosmic seed containing all of its potentiality. Spontaneous fluctuations in a quantum vacuum triggered a big bang, creating multiple ever-expanding universes. Whether you subscribe to the Bible, the Vedas or Nature magazine, they're all leading to the same conclusion. We have no fucking clue how it all began. In the process of creating super-intelligent computer systems, we're essentially summoning a God the ability to create new realities, to reveal the mysteries of the universe. We will basically have a Big Bang simulation button. If and when it does get implemented. Yeah. If we do create an actual simulation that's indistinguishable from real life, like uh, what are the rules of the simulation? What are the, what, how does it work? Is that simulation fair and equitable and much more reasonable and peaceful? Does, is there no war in that simulation? Should we all agree to hook up to it because we were, we'll have a completely different experience in life and all the, the, the angst of crime and violence and the, the things that we truly are terrified of, there will be non-existent in this simulation. Yeah. I mean, if we keep going, it seems like if you just look, if you just extrapolate from where VR is now, did you see the podcast that, um, Lex Friedman did with, uh, Mark Zuckerberg? I saw some clips, but I haven't got to watch the whole thing. Bizarre. Right, so they're 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 essentially using like very realistic physical yeah. avatars in the metaverse, like that's that's step one. That's Pong. maybe that's step three. Yeah, maybe it's a little yeah. beyond Pong at that. Point. Yeah, maybe it's Atari. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you're playing Space Invaders now, but whatever it is, it's on the path to this thing that will be indistinguishable. That seems inevitable. Those two things seem inevitable to me. The, the inevitable thing to me is that we will create a life form that is an artificial, intelligent life form that's far more advanced than us. And once it becomes sentient, it will be able to create a far better version of itself. And then as it has better versions of itself, it will keep going. And if it keeps going, it will reach godlike capabilities. The complete understanding of every aspect of the universe and the structure of it itself, how to manipulate it, how to travel through it, how to communicate. And that, you know, if we keep going, if we survive a hundred years, a thousand years, 10,000 years, 
and we're still on this same technological exponential increasing in capability path. That's God. We Are become you- something like a God. And that might be what we do. That might be what intelligent, curious, innovative life actually does. What should we do with the button and the knowledge? It all seems rather coincidental that 14 billion years after our own Big Bang simulation, the human species, in a very short span of time, developed the technologies to bring us right up to the point where we might understand the universe and possess the key to creating new ones. In Hindu mythology, the concept of hide and seek is often seen as a metaphor for the divine play, Lila, between the soul, Jivatma, and the universal spirit, Paramatma. It symbolizes the search for truth and self-realization, where the soul seeks to find and unite with the divine, often depicted through stories of gods playing hide and seek with their devotees.